To remove your rear brake caliper, what you're going to do is you're just going to take out this bolt here and this bolt here. Oh, before you do that, down here, you see these little clips? So this is your ABS sensor, if you have ABS. You're going to want to take this little clip and pop it off of the brake line there. Keep track of those little clips. You're going to need them later. If you lose them, you can probably buy more or just use a zip tie. But anyways, there they are. And uh, before we take this completely apart, we're going to have to bend up this metal tab here carefully. That way we can take this brake line out. Now, if you're just doing brake pads, you won't have to do this. But since this is uh, part of a big, long shot, um, we want to have the caliper out of the way. That way we can get the swing arm out of there. So from here, take a T40 Torx bit. Break both of these free. You don't necessarily need an extension this long. I'm just trying to keep my hands out of the shot. Also, buy really good Torx bits. The, those mediocre ones, like the ones from uh, AutoZone, they'll break. All right. Once you have both of these broken free, you should be able to loosen them, take them right on out of there. You're going to want to keep these in order just in case they're different lengths, which I believe they are. So there's the rear one. There's the front one. I guess you really can't get them screwed up, but still, it's nice to keep them in order. Then from there, you should just be able to grab your caliper and slide it off of there. If you can't for some reason, uh, maybe it's just really grabbing the rotor for whatever reason, you could actually take the screwdriver and push on the brake pad just a wee little bit and recompress the pads just a wee little bit, and then you'll be able to slide that caliper off of there. And you can slide that thing right up off of there just like that. Now is a good time to check your rear brake pads. We're looking good. Uh, as long as they're thicker than a dime, you're in pretty good shape. Now we're going to set the caliper down here. Now there is the caliper bracket right here, and when we pull the rear axle, that will come out with it. And you want to be mindful of the ABS sensor, you want to be mindful of the location, rotation, and uh, don't damage a wire. To remove your brake pads, you can take a quarter inch 12 point socket, it's very important, and break this one free. Good lord, that thing is tight. Probably should have done this before we unbolted the caliper. <sighs> Good lord. I'm gonna take a screwdriver. There we are. Just make sure you don't torque the brake line at all. And now, we take a quarter inch 12 point. Hmm. I guess a ratchet would probably be better for this. I can't find a quarter inch 12 point socket. But anyways, unscrew these out of there. Pull that pin out, set it in a safe, clean location. Then you can take your brake pads out of here. Now these brake pads are in really good shape. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. If they were not, we would be putting new pads in. And we'd actually take the old pads, set them in here, and to recompress the calipers, because you can't just use a C-clamp and recompress one, because it's a dual piston caliper. So if you recompress one piston, it turns into a game of whack-a-mole, because the other one comes out of there. So from there, you can take your old pads, put a big flathead screwdriver in here, twist it, just you know, twist it, and you'll see the piston recompress back in there. It may not hurt to take the reservoir cap off your rear master brake cylinder just to let the air flow out a little bit too. Because remember, a whole bunch of fluid's gonna flow from this back up to the master brake cylinder. But then once that's done, you can discard your old pads Make sure your little rubber anti-vibration plugs are down inside your caliper pistons. Boop. And boop. This little metal clip, it's very important. Here's what the thing does. So it only goes in one way, which is nice. This puts a wee little bit of pressure down on your pads and hopefully stops them from going ee 
hate when your bike's going really slow, but you're not on the brakes. Um, if your pads still do that, you could get a new one of these little clips. If they still do it after you get a new clip, it, it just is what it is, and you're just going to have to deal with it. But anyways, then take your new pads. Slide them in place. Remember, friction material towards the middle. God, I hope that was in shot. Yeah, so you got your little metal clip in there, just like that. Your rubber plugs are down inside the pistons there. You can take your new pads, slide them in place. Remember, friction material goes in, because that's going to go up against the brake rotor. Slide them all back in place and take your new pin, slide up in there from the bottom. Drop it on the lift. Pick a bag up, slide a bag in there from the bottom. Thread it in until it stops. There we go. And from there, take your quarter inch 12 point, tighten her back up. That's pretty tight. We're gonna remember to snug tighten that up once the caliper gets remounted up on there. So slide your pads till there's a gap in between them. Then you can take that gap in between the pads, put the rotor in there, and slide your caliper back down on there. You may have to jiggle it a little bit to get your pads to seat in place. Hey, here's another point I should make. Let's see if you can see that. Right here. Can you see that? Right there. <coughs> right there. These two tabs of the pads go in down in there. Now some people would probably say I should put the caliper on first, then slide the pads in place. That's probably the responsible way to do this. But in the end, I've never been known for being responsible. So hopefully you can see right there, pads go down into place just like that. A little slider bolt lines up up there. We can take find that brake caliper bolt that I put in a safe location. This is gonna take a minute. Fuck it, any vibration push can go. It's gonna be up here. Those look like they have thread lock around them. Cut on that. So slide your pads till there's a gap in between them. Then you can take that gap in between the pads, put the rotor in there, and slide your caliper back down on there. You may have to jiggle it a little bit to get your pads to seat in place. Oh, 
Oh, hey, here's another point I should make. Let's see if you can see that. Right here. Can you see that? Right there. These two tabs of the pads go in down in there. Now some people would probably say I should put the caliper on first, then slide the pads in place. That's probably the responsible way to do this. But in the end, I've never been known for being responsible. Now, you can take this bolt that goes in the back there, thread it in, get it to start in there. And don't thread in all the way yet. Now, take your front bolt, wipe the threads clean, thread that one down in there. Locate the Torx bit socket that you had for this that you now can't find because you're disorganized. There we are. Take your T40 Torx bit. And that thing should thread in there relatively easily. Till it stops. We're going to thread the top or back one in, whatever you want to call it. Thread it in until it stops. Right there. I'm going with 20. Why? On used stuff, the threads are never perfect, so I always go with the higher end of the torque specs. That way it kind of overrides any binding of the threads, which could give you an inaccurate torque reading. One click there. All right. Now remember, before you go for a ride, pump your rear brake a few times because you need to get those pistons to seat and the pistons and the pads to seat up against the rotor again. Otherwise, the first time you hit the brakes, you're not going to have anything. Nobody wants that.